I am back again. Today let's have a quick look at a few simple keyframing tools that could potentially save you quite a lot of time. And so let's hop into DaVinci Resolve and have a quick look. Right now we're in the editing tab, so I'm just going to make a quick fusion composition. Just drag it in so we can start, you know, doing some simple motion graphics and do some keyframing just as an example to demonstrate these tools. Um, so let's make a rectangle. Just uh, and also let's make a background node. And I'm just, just going to connect the rep rectangle into the background node. So basically the rectangle is drawing a, a, a square or rectangle and it's making it as a mask for the background. So the background normally would just fill the whole screen basically and now just cut out basically a square part. So we can go to the background and change its color to something we can see easier. Maybe, okay, maybe like a yellow. And I'm just going to make the re rectangle a bit smaller. Okay, maybe something like this, just as an example. Now, let's say we want the rectangle to move left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. Now, instead of having to keep keyframing every single movement from left to right, left to right, left to right, we can just keyframe it once and make it into a loop. So from the background, I'm going to, uh, I'm just pressing shift space to get this uh, box up. And I'm going to search for the transform node. There you go, transform. And with the transform node in the first frame, maybe I'll just position the box uh, around here. Oh, sorry, I've got to drag the transform node into the monitor so we can actually see the movement. So the first frame, let's say the rectangle will be here. I'm just going to keyframe the center. And another maybe 20 frames, I'm going to move the rectangle here. Now if we have a quick play, you can see the box just move from left to right. And that's pretty much it. But what we can do is we can open up the spline editor and we will just click here to uh, activate the keyframe that we just did and just click on this button here to fill the monitor with the keyframes or to fill the, the screen. And you can see these two keyframes is basically uh, where our rectangle is moving. So it's moving from left and then moving to right. Now what we can do is we can highlight both these keyframes and then right click and then go to set loop. Now there are three different types of loop you can choose. Loop is basically so it goes to the end and then it jumps back and then play it all over again, again, again. So if I press set loop here, you can see that if I zoom out, you see the keyframe just keep repeating. It goes to the end, it jumps to the beginning, do it again, jumps to the beginning, do it again. So if I play it now, you see the, the square is just repeating itself again and again. So in the uh, the beginning sample of the, of the clip, you see when the, when it's an arrow pointing at something, we might want a motion like this. So it goes to the end, it points to the end, points to the end, points to the end. Uh, obviously, if you don't want this kind of motion, instead of setting a loop, you can set a ping pong. Basically, what it does is it bounces back and forth. So basically, now it gets to the end and it reverse and then reverse and reverse. So now you've just got a movement from left to right, left to right, left to right. And the good thing about this is you can actually very easily uh, change the speed. So these are our two original keyframes. So if I click on the second one and, oops, sorry, I just select just the second one. And if I drag it out, it's going to move slower. You see, every time I do something, it affects all the other loops. So now it's going to move slower. And if I want it to move faster, I can drag it in and play it. And not only that, all the easing that you do to these two keyframes, it will affect all the loops. So if I like make the ending kind of slow down a bit like this, I'll just increase the size a bit so you can see it clearer. You can see that it will affect every single other loop. So now if you play it, you see, it starts very fast and slow down, come back, slow down, come back. So if we want some easing, we can just maybe highlight both and then right click and go to uh, smooth or you can just press shift s and now just smooth out the entire keyframe see so it moves nice and slow so it goes to the end slow down come back slow down you know so you get a more organic movement now in some cases you might not start the uh, keyframing right at the beginning of your clip so as you can see right now when you set the loop it will just basically repeat all the all the parts that are after but you can also set pre loop so you can right click and go to set pre loop and you can again have three different types of loop to choose from. Let's just say ping pong again. So we'll make all the keyframes before loop as well. And so basically just in case you don't set your keyframe right at the beginning of the clip. Now you might notice that there is also another one 
where you go set loop and there's a relative. So with the relative, let's go to uh, another fusion uh, compound, fu <laughs> sorry, fusion composition, so I can maybe sh show you more clearly what it does. Okay, now we've moved to a new fusion composition and we might want a motion something like this. So basically what's going on is we want the ball to move to the right a lot and then move back to the left a little bit, then move a lot to the right again, then back to the left a little bit, and then to the right a lot again, and back to the left. Now, <laughs> just saying it is already time wasting enough, and obviously we don't want to waste time just keyframing every single movement. So basically what we can do is use the relative loop. Now I'm just gonna delete this transform node, so we just have a ball sitting there in the middle of the screen. So what we can do is I'm just gonna add a new transform node, and in this transform node, just going to put it in the monitor. We're going to move the ball to the left. And maybe let's say it's just about here. I'm just going to put in a keyframe here. And maybe we'll move it uh, a few key, a few frames, like to here. And then we're going to move the ball to the right, maybe th about this much. Now if we have a quick look at the spline tool and click on the keyframe and this icon over here. You can see that now the ball is moving from left to right. Now, what we want to do is when the ball gets to the end here, we want it to move back to the left. So I'm just going to move the playhead a little bit more. And I'm going to create a new keyframe here. I'm just going to drag the keyframe down. So now as you can see, the ball is moving back to the left. So what's happening now is, I'm just going to zoom out a little bit. You can see that the ball is moving, oops, sorry, moving from left to right a lot and then move back to the left a little bit and then it stops. So if you have a quick play, right and then left. Now what we can do is we can set the relative loop so that this motion is repeated again and again and again. So it moves a lot to the right, then to the left a little bit, then to the right again and then to the left a little bit. So I'm just going to highlight all three keyframes, right click, press set loop and then go to relative. And now you can see that the keyframe just keep repeating itself again and again and again. So it's different from the loop before where if we use the loop function, it will do this and then it will jump to the beginning and then do it again, jump to the beginning and do it again. Or, or if we use the ping pong, basically it will just go here, down here, and then it will just reverse itself. So it move to the right, left, and then right, left again, which is not what we want. But now if we have a quick play, we can see that the motion is like a staggered motion that, that we wanted to do before without having to keyframe like every single movement. And in this case, as you can see, I didn't uh, start the keyframe at the beginning of the clip, so the ball only start moving here. So if I want, I could uh, highlight all three and then set pre-loop and then relative as well. So it just carries on back down. But obviously it just moves backwards off the screen, so it doesn't really matter in this case. Now these three tools can be used in a lot of different ways and combined with other node and it can be quite fun to play around, have a play around with it. So for example, just a quick uh, example, if we want this uh, red thing to spin around like maybe like a loading screen or something, that's really easy to do. So for the eclipse, instead of having it right in the center, we might move it to the left just a little bit. So 0.4 moves to the left here. So basically the center of the frame is here, but the eclipse is now to the left. And in the background node, I'm gonna again add a transform node. And now if we move the angle, oops, sorry, again, I forgot to put it on the monitor. If we just move the angle, you can see that the ball is now spinning around. So we can just do a simple keyframe. So at the beginning, the angle is zero, make a keyframe, go maybe 20 frame, and then make the angle 360. And now we have a quick play. You can see the ball spinning around. Now obviously we might if you want to spin it spin it in the other direction, we can just uh instead of 360, we can just have minus 360 and now to spin the other direction. And again we just go to the spline tool and let's set a quick loop. So right click and then set loop and maybe you want ping pong so it spins there and back, there and back. And again, we might want to do a bit of easing so it doesn't, you know, the motion is not so robotic. So it's more like smoother. Spin, spin, spin. And now we might want to add other effects. For example, if I just shut off the spline tool, I can add a duplicate node. 
and the duplicate node basically just duplicate this uh, this ball into several copies. So if I make four copies, and right now we play it, we can't see the difference because it's just duplicating it on top of each other. So we might want to make the copies kind of start slower than the original. Oh, sorry again, I forgot to put the, the duplicate into the monitor. So again, if the time offset is zero, they all just spin at the exact same rate and nothing happens. If we put it into minus, all the copies will start kind of slightly after the original. So now we have something like this, just spinning back and forth. So again, you can use it as a loading screen and you can do other things with it. For example, you can make uh, each one slightly smaller if you want. You get some motion like this. So as you can see, it can be quite like interesting to just play around with all these um, this uh, loop um, plus duplicate and maybe you can add other effects as well. Now, okay, let's do just a quick another quick example. Maybe we'll just do the one, the triangular one at the beginning of the tutorial. So um, I'm just going to make a new fusion clip quickly. Okay, so now we're in a new fusion composition with just the background, a red background. And this time I'm going to use a triangle to use as a mask. And for the triangle, I'm going to turn off the solid. So it's just like an empty and we just have a, a small border around the edges. Now, again, I'm gonna use the uh, transform node to change the size of the triangle. So if I put it in the monitor here, for the first frame, I will have the size to be at zero. And then after 20 frame, oh, sorry, I forgot to press the keyframe button here. And after 20 frames, maybe have it, so it's about, let's say, about this big. So we have a quick, quick play. There, I'll try and go just increasing its size. And what I want to do is so just have this motion repeat again and again. So I'm just going to go to the spline editor and highlight both and right click again, set loop and go to loop. So now we have a play, just small, large, small, large, small, large. Now we might want to ease the end a bit. So when it increases to the end, it kind of slows down before it stops. So have a quick ease like this and have a quick play and again this time I'm just going to use a duplicate node and maybe have let's say seven copies and for the time offset maybe let's have like minus 1.25 or something and let's have a play there you go you have like a kind of I know 80s uh, going through a tunnel effect or whatever. <laughs> but as you can see, the uh, the effect can be quite, like the duplicate effect especially, can be quite demanding on your computer. So I would use it cautiously. You know, you don't want to, the number of copies to be too large. And another thing which can also help your animation look kind of better, but I didn't use it in this tutorial because it would just slow down the machine too much, is uh, all the motion blur. So, you know, all the transform node and the duplicate node, they will have the motion blur effect. So you can go into the uh, the settings tab at the end and just enable motion blur. And well, I mean, it'll be pretty heavy on your PC, but you'll get, you know, when your motion graphic is moving quickly, you'll get more natural, like realistic motion blur. So it's not just complete tech chopped all the time. Okay, well, that's pretty much it for today. I hope it was useful and maybe I'll see you again next time. Bye.